Bis gleich. Okay, good morning, everybody. It's 9.30, uh, at least in Europe. I welcome you all to the second day of the Materials Week. Uh, my name is Stefan Klein. I'm the current CEO of the German Materials Society. I'm quite happy to welcome you. We are organizing this uh, Congress uh, and we present you today two different topics under the umbrella of sustainability. And uh, it's my pleasure to introduce to you uh, Dr. Hayo Diringa, who is uh, the organizer of the topic Lightweight Design with Advanced Materials. He is at uh, Hereon, Helmholtz Zentrum um, Hereon, uh, former times uh, Gestach, and uh, uh, Dr. Deringa, the floor is yours. And we're looking forward to a quite interesting program. And I wish you all an interesting and informative day. Yeah, thanks a lot. You're right, my name is Harjo Dieringer and I'm coordinating the topic lightweight design with advanced materials here in this materials week. I've been working on magnesium alloys and magnesium composites for more than 20 years and I'm now heading a department of hybrid materials and processes at the new Institute of Materials and Process Design at the Helmholtz Centrum Herion, which was in former times the Helmholtz Centrum Gestacht. And I'm pleased to announce a plenary talk by Dr. Martin Tauber at the beginning of the first session today. Martin Tauber has over 25 years experience in different raw material related industries, whereas magnesium has been the most significant one. He executive uh, with executive positions with leading industry players like Hydro Magnesium and Magontech. In two, uh, 2009, he founded Faurus Management, a consulting company which provides services to the magnesium industry on a global base. Martin is also a European representative and former chairman of the European Committee of the International Magnesium Association, IMA, and president of the Critical Raw Materials Alliance. He's a registered expert of the European Commission. In his talk, he addresses aspects of the sustainability of the use of magnesium alloys compared to other materials. Uh, and now I'm looking forward to Martin's presentation. Just let me say that if we do not have the time for questions after the talk, I would like you to um, post it in the chat and then I'm sure Martin will answer, answer the question afterwards. Martin, the floor is yours. Thank you, Ayo, for the uh, very nice and kind introduction. I'm uh, trying to share my screen and uh, good morning to the audience. Uh, I uh, recognize that I'm the icebreaker presentation of, of the second day, which is normally at a live event, a, a small, uh, uh, not, I would say, a hangover. Uh, share the screen. Excuse me a moment. Are you able to see my screen? That's yes, perfect. Yeah. Okay, very good. So good morning again. Uh, my name is Martin Tauber. I'm uh, currently the uh, a representative of the uh, International Magnesium Association. Uh, for those who don't know the IMA, uh, it's a long lasting standing industry association. Uh, I think we had the, our eight, uh, 78th conference, uh, yearly conference this year. Uh, of course, we had to do it online as well as most of as most of us. And uh, this is already the first advertisement. Next year, we're going to try to meet physically again at the World Conference of the IMA in Barcelona. So we look forward to see some of you uh, there. As Hayo said, uh, I will talk about the uh, carbon footprint uh, analysis of uh, primary magnesium. Uh, mainly focused on uh, the pitching process uh, in, uh, in China. Uh, we all know that the uh, an LCA uh, is uh, the kind of tag word now and will be in the future. So it will be the highlight of all uh, va uh, value chains uh, for material selection, strategic, strategic material choices. 
but also we see it more and more in in uh, in policy as well that uh, re regulations and so on will be based on uh, on LCAs. Uh, in the IMA, uh, of course, magnesium is no exception, uh, and we did already a, a study in 2013 and had the uh, obligation, so so to say, or we we would like we wanted to show that also magnesium is making some uh, improvements. Uh, so I'm not an LCA expert, uh, and uh, uh, of course, IMA has uh, awarded an independent uh, organization, uh, the DLR in, in Stuttgart for uh, executing this study. And uh, the main person, main author of this study is uh, Simone Ehrenberger, which uh, who uh, might you, 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 you some of them know as well. So that's the only uh, IMA slide I will show. I, I take the liberty to use Simone's slides also for for independence uh, reasons as well. So the study was conducted by uh, the German Aerospace Center and the Institute of Vehicle uh, Concepts, uh, published in 2020, available on the IMA website uh, for free as well, and of course, for, for everybody to, uh, uh, to look at. Uh, of course, an LCA, uh, what is the main purpose of an LCA is to, to, uh, to define the scope, uh, to define the value chain uh, where you look into and what you want to uh, investigate. Uh, we have, uh, because you may know that 85% that uh, uh, of uh, global magnesium primary is produced in China uh, using the so-called pitching process, which is a, a, a batch process uh, developed uh, many, many years ago in, in Canada, adopted by China. Uh, in comparison to uh, an alternative method for producing primary magnesium, which is the electrolytical process, similar to, uh, to aluminium. Uh, 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 but it's fair to say that, that the pitching process is, is less uh, uh, capital intensive than the electrolytical uh, process. So we are focusing on the primary process in, in China. Uh, we're focusing on the uh, different energy sources because as, as, as we know, uh, an LCA is, is standing and falling with uh, the availability of green energy. Uh, that's the, the current problem in uh, China as well, but, but also in some parts of, uh, of, of Europe that we would have the technology, but we don't have the grid. Uh, uh, who, uh, which is providing uh, uh, CO2 free or green, uh, green energy. Uh, China has also committed to uh, the Paris uh, climate goals uh, and uh, recently also announced that they make significant reduction of CO2 in 2030 and uh, completely CO2 free in 2060, uh, because that, that's also for, for, for China. That's a big, uh, big challenge as well. Uh, so it will involve all industries, the magnesium industry is just a small, a small player there. So we're focusing on different uh, energy sourcing, we're focusing on uh, the whole value chain, so that means in uh, magnesium also the, uh, including the raw materials, so including uh, ferrosilicon, for instance, which, is, which we will see is, uh, is a high contributor to uh, the whole uh, carbon footprint of magnesium. Uh, we are also uh, taking into consideration secondary magnesium and post-consumer uh, scrap. Uh, and we're taking into consideration here the different factors on uh, recycling efficiency as well. Uh, then I think most interesting uh, is that we are uh, updating a, a case study on, uh, on, on a part, uh, on an, 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 an aluminium part, and compare that with conventional primary magnesium part, but also with some other uh, magnesium produced from, uh, from other sources and, uh, and also from potential magnesium, which could be produced uh, within different projects in, uh, in the pipeline. And uh, most important, uh, also the uh, study was uh, accredited and, and uh, reviewed by a third party, and is according to uh, to, uh, to the ISO 14000 standards, 
uh, which is necessary to, to compare at least uh, uh, blue and, uh, uh, let's say, uh, red and green apples uh, with, uh, with each other. Uh, so with that, here you see the result of the, uh, of the study. Uh, we see that from the 2013 study to the 2020 study, we have a slightly improvement of the carbon footprint, uh, which is due to the different energy sources and some improvements during the process. Uh, but we have also uh, an, an in a slightly, uh, let's say, what makes the difference smaller, that uh, different uh, steps in the process, uh, they also use more, more energy, and that's also some uh, re regulation and, 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 and uh, environmental obligations uh, the Chinese uh, uh, had to, uh, uh, to add as well to the process. So here you see the different steps of the uh, Chinese pitching process. Uh, you see immediately that the mining uh, is uh, less, uh, has a, a, a very insignificant uh, input to the whole process. And uh, the most important, uh, the most uh, biggest contributor to that is the uh, ferrosilicon production, which is normally outside uh, the primary production uh, for facility of magnesium. And it contributes with more than half uh, to the, uh, uh, the overall result. Uh, uh, you go down the calcination here is uh, is also a, a very in, in energy intensive and that's where the most uh, uh, improvements uh, took place uh, within the last years. So that was switched to different uh, in, in energy sources. Uh, so the, the overall uh, is coming to uh, 21.8. And that's the, uh, the weighted average uh, between the different energy sources uh, that you could uh, use uh, for heating up uh, the retorts or, 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 or running the, uh, the calcination kill uh, with uh, coal-fired energy, uh, with natural gas, and, uh, and sometimes with also more, more greener energy like hydro and uh, solar and wind energy. But that's minor in use uh, at, in, uh, in, uh, in the current state. Uh, you also see some uh, credits uh, and credits in an LCA. Uh, who is familiar with LCA is that if, it, if it's uh, available for uh, a process for, by, for use of byproducts or if a raw material is coming from a, from a process where you add credits to the other process, you can deduct those uh, credits. And uh, those credits of, of 6.2 average is coming from, uh, from fuel gases, uh, which are uh, provided from uh, coke plants or semi-coke plants. Uh, and they are provided for low cost or provided for free. <clears throat> and this uh, we could deduct uh, from our overall figure, which uh, was around 28 uh, kilograms CO2 equivalent. Uh, uh, for one kilogram of uh, uh, magnesium. Uh, that's also because the magnesium industry has, within the recent years, has moved uh, from region to region in China and uh, uh, is more located now in the, in the province Shanxi with double A, uh, where most of the, uh, or a lot of uh, coke and semi-coke plants are located. Um, and uh, they are next to the plant and, and the off gas, so the fuel gases are directly uh, uh, installed that they are connected to the, the primary plant. Uh, we also included in this study, and that was the first time we included uh, new projects, uh, which are come uh, in a second. Uh, but if you look at the uh, top right uh, chart, uh, there you see uh, uh, other uh, countries uh, producing uh, magnesium uh, with other uh, companies, of course. Uh, and there we have started on the left, uh, we have uh, DSM, which stands for Dead Sea Magnesium, uh, today called ICL Industries. Uh, 
they are using uh, an elect electrolytic uh, process uh, from uh, a salt brine uh, and uh, can with some uh, uh, chlorine byproducts uh, have around a footprint of uh, 13 to 14 uh, uh, CO2 uh, a equivalent. And we have another electrolytic process, which is currently the biggest project in the magnesium industry, it's located in uh, in uh, in Qinghai, and QSLM stands for uh, Qinghai Salt Lake Magnesium. Uh, and uh, the first step of plant production there is 100,000 tons. Uh, that might sound uh, small for people for from from the aluminium or even the steel industry. Uh, but uh, if you know that the global magnesium market is about 1 million ton, uh, so that, that the first step is already 10% of the global uh, production uh, there. This project is an, an industry park uh, with uh, a, couple of in, a couple of processes, industries connected to each other. And uh, that's why using the electrolytical process, using uh, hydro energy, and uh, uh, I think the biggest solar installation in China so far um, and with some credits uh, for the further production of PVC, uh, they come down to uh, a footprint of uh, around five. Uh, so that's currently the, the lowest uh, carbon footprint what we see, uh, what we see in, uh, in, uh, in the industry. Uh, and they are currently in a, in a in a, in a ramp up phase. Uh, on the side right, sorry, I have to go back because I can't see the chart because of the, the pictures, but it doesn't matter. Uh, we, have two, uh, uh, we have two thermal processes, uh, one in Turkey, uh, at, built by ESAN, uh, and it's a, a Chinese pigeon plant. Uh, pro, uh, pigeon process plant uh, and has of course a similar footprint to uh, to China, uh, but could use some. Uh, so they are able to use some ferrosilicon with uh, lower carbon footprint, so uh, they might come uh, uh, lower as well. Uh, and then currently in uh, Brazil, we have the company Rima, which producing. Um, uh, let's say actually the lowest carbon footprint in the industry. Uh, they're using some fo forestry programs to obtain credits from uh, heating up their charcoal uh, with charcoal their fair silicon uh, uh, production. Uh, I think I have to speed up a little bit. On the uh, the bottom uh, right, you see uh, two projects which are in the pipeline. Uh, one using the electrolytical, electrolytical process that's in Canada, uh, that's currently in a in a trial phase, a lab production phase, uh, and it's using serpentine tailings from asbestos production, and uh, the other one right is uh, La Trobe in Australia, uh, located in the La Trobe Valley. Uh, using uh, fly ash as a as as a raw material and can obtain credits from uh, uh, because the the byproduct can be used in the concrete industry. Uh, coming to the uh, uh, case study, I think that's that's uh, an, an interesting one, and of course we can we can see. Uh, case study competition, you can see case studies against case studies, material against materials and so on. So we, we are not claiming that this is, uh, is, 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 is one, one, 100% uh, uh, because you know when you compare parts and when you design parts between uh, different materials, uh, the part design has to be slightly adapted uh, because of stiffness, because of, 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 of the material itself, because of gating and so on. So it's not always 100%, but it gives you some, uh, some, some direction. Uh, what we have done here, we have compared an, an aluminium uh, part uh, with a magnesium part with similar geometry. Uh, it's a cross-car beam uh, produced by Meridian Technologies 
um, and this is where you sit in your car, this is what you have in front of you, this is where the, the steering wheel is, is mounted on. And uh, that's a, a part in magnesium because uh, of its, its light weight, of course, but also it combines a lot of functionalities. So normally you would see uh, uh, many parts welded, connected together, and in magnesium it's possible to do that with, in one uh, piece as well. Uh, we compare uh, an, a magnesium part made in AM50, uh, com uh, a conventional alloy and an aluminum component of AL uh, magnesium 3 alloy. Uh, the weight of the magnesium part is 4 kilogram and the weight of the aluminum part is 5.4. Uh, and then we have the fuel reduction coefficient. Uh, that's a figure, uh, that's an important figure when you compare uh, vehicles uh, against each other. And uh, in that case, we are just taking uh, the fuel uh, of a combustion engine model, the fuel uh, savings into consideration, uh, which uh, results in this co coefficient. Uh, the mileage, we, we took uh, 200,000 uh, uh, miles here. And uh, uh, and material recycling end of life uh, that we acknowledge, of course, that the magnesium uh, that the aluminium recycling uh, chain is is much better developed uh, and, and because it's much, it's much larger uh, than the magnesium one. Uh, we also take the die casting, so the production of the part and the alloying of the part into consideration, and uh, this is slightly higher in the magnesium base of 1.5 compared to 1.4. Uh, what you see the right bottom is, that is the production plus the alloying. Uh, do you see that, uh, of course, aluminum, uh, we take, we took the aluminum Europe average production uh, CO2 footprint uh, here, which is around, I think 7.8, uh, so around eight-ish, uh, and compared it with uh, all the different processes I've shown you before. Uh, so you see that, that the REMA process would be uh, e around equal and only the, the, the QSLM process would give a, uh, uh, an advantage uh, for uh, in the production phase. Uh, what we claim, of course, uh, is when you have light weight, then it, you should also look into the, uh, the whole life cycle of the vehicle, so from production phase, use phase, and, and, and the end of life phase. Uh, you have on the on the left side just the, the, the left bar is what you have seen before, uh, and then you see the other phases uh, where magnesium, of course, of the because of the lighter weight has uh, the equal advantage in in the use phase. Uh, doesn't matter which process you have used for producing it, uh, and then the end of life phase and the credits for the post consumer scrap as well. So the result here is that you see with uh, taking the use phase uh, and the end of life phase into consideration that uh, compared to aluminium, uh, or almost all magnesium uh, pros primary processes uh, 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 display a, a, a smaller or bigger advantage uh, against uh, the compared uh, aluminium part here of course uh, it's the same uh, logic we have seen before uh, less uh, less carbon footprint more uh, co2 save savings uh, during the whole uh, life cycle of uh, the vehicle uh, we have another uh, case study about uh, magnesium parts used in uh, in, a, in an airplane uh, which is featured in, in, in the study as well. Uh, so I invite you to, uh, which I have no time to go into that now, but I invite you to read that on the IMA uh, website. Uh, so with that, I think I will come already to my conclusions uh, of, of, uh, of my presentation, uh, which are that uh, we have shown with our 2020 study that the global, uh, the weighted average emissions of the global magnesium, which comes mainly from China, 
has uh, uh, decreased, uh, not significantly because of other upsets for uh, more energy for more process related uh, steps as well. Uh, uh, but China is moving to uh, a more greener grid. Uh, and if China is uh, fulfilling their promises on, on, on which they have made for 2013, 2060, I know that's a long time to go, but it automatically will affect also the magnesium production. Uh, so uh, it might be with the same technology, it might be with an in, in, uh, improved technology, but it might be also with some completely different uh, technology. So time will tell here. Uh, also, the effort on uh, sourcing different ferrosilicon, which is a, a big effort, uh, with a big impact on on, uh, on the global footprint of, of magnesium, would make an, uh, a difference. Uh, also, uh, developing the recycling uh, chain, uh, also for uh, for end of life, uh, uh, we have a very good recycling chain with process scrap, but not with uh, end of life scrap. Uh, of course, we will uh, uh, enforce the, uh, or educate the, the, our, our stakeholders that uh, with magnesium, you should look at the complete life cycle of a vehicle, not only into the, uh, the primary production and the production of, of the part. Uh, and that we see a great future ahead when the Qinghai project or other similar project in that with that scope and with that scale uh, come online in, in China or, or outside China, that it will it will change the supply situation of uh, magnesium as well. Uh, I've mentioned already the, the look into the, the whole uh, life cycle. Uh, and I think the what, 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 we, what we have to say is, of course, uh, that, that our uh, case studies and, and also other case studies are not 100% uh, 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 cast in stone, so that uh, comparing material and material parts of parts is always a little bit difficult. And it will be difficult when, for instance, LCAs will be used in, in, in policy development and in regulations uh, we see for instance in other industries like the battery industries that the European Commission wants to regulate a raw material used for for the batteries and they of course will look into into LCAs and, and with automotive sourcing for for other uh, components other materials it will be the same in it. I think it will be difficult and, and at one or the other you have to find a compromise when you compare, uh, materials uh, with life cycle uh, analysis. Uh, what we also was a, a major goal of our study was to uh, to update uh, uh, databases uh, because we have seen databases uh, using uh, CO2 footprint equivalent for magnesium for, of up to 80 kilograms for one kilogram produced primary magnesium, which is which was and which is and which will be, of course, a, a not very beneficial for raw material in the material competition. Uh, so we're working hard to get our new 2020 study in uh, the databases uh, like a Gabi database, like the EcoInvent database, like also some databases they use in, in, in China. So to get at least uh, the current status of the industry uh, when people are using that uh, for designing parts or uh, developing or uh, uh, calculating some, uh, some LCAs. Uh, so with that, I think I'm at the end of the conclusions, the end of my talk. Uh, thank you very much for listening. And uh, we are, of course, all ears and all doors. If you have questions about uh, LCA of magnesium or magnesium in general, then please visit the IMA, IMA website. Uh, and uh, uh, please have a look if you're interested uh, in uh, the full study, uh, which is displayed there as well. Thank you very much. And uh, as said, I will willing to answer questions in, uh, in the chat. And I wish you a very uh, nice and informative uh, further conference. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Martin. Up to now, there are no questions in the chat that fits quite well for the time schedule. And it's nice to see that once the production phase is improved, like they do it in China at the moment, or they are going to do it in terms of sustainability, that uh, magnesium is really comparable with other metals. And that's quite nice. Probably in terms of um, the recycling, there, has, there, there needs improve, it needs improvement in the future. There it needs additional solutions, probably. That, that comes with more material. That yeah. comes when more material is used. If that's the point. At the moment, it. it's not enough. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Thank you, Martin. Thank you very much for the presentation. And uh, it's ten o'clock. I hand over to the next um, 